My name is Dean, you're watching TravelVids.tv and this is the Cape Winelands vlog. You're watching episode number eight. Today we're exploring the last part of Paul. It is the Four Par de Berg route. It's fresh this morning. Oh, no, need a friend, I'll never let you go again. Reach out when your mind's uneasy, cause I'll understand. It is fresh in Pal today. I am making my way across St. Achterpal onto what is now the R44 direction Wellington. Now I'm living in a matchbox. Uh, that sign just said Wellington is 13 kilometers away, so it's a 10 minute drive. Of all the routes in Pal, of the six of the six regions that make up the six different routes of Pal, we're checking out the last one today. It's Fur Pas de Berg, which means just in front of the Horse Mountain. So, how do you make a decision on on where to go exactly? It, it's it is difficult. I mean, we've only seen a, a part of what is available, and besides that, also you know we haven't. We can't try everything on the menu, and, and also, I, <laughs> at some point, you, you can't keep drinking wine, otherwise you, you can't make a good judgment on which is the best, because they all just start getting better and better over time. I think the same goes for the burgers, you know, we've, I've had a real challenge identifying which is the best burger in town. Um, there's definitely a best burger in each region, I can confirm that, so it doesn't matter which route you take, you're going to get the best of Pal everywhere you go. Watch the video series, look at the different routes, pick one that you found most interesting and just get an accommodation in the area and explore the entire region. So, I'm at Domain Brahms, which uh, says on the sign it is a tractor museum. But they've also got a uh, like a farm stall type shop here. They do a good breakfast, I believe. I'm really, really in need of a breakfast. Uh, but I am early. I've got about half an hour to kill. So I'm going to take a little bit of a drive into the farmlands here and uh, check it out. When facing times of doubt, stand up. The day is starting at uh, Tuka. My heart was dead and broken, but now it's found. Event venue and a chapel and a cellar and wine. The Tuka shop store is over there. There's some pretty intense looking old farm machinery lying around here. I don't know if this is actually a farm tool or something that they used in World War One to like torture people in trenches because it looks more like that. Ooh, tractors. I love stuff like this. So I've stumbled onto one of those places where you can just spend hours filming things. Darren, I think you were onto something when it came to these. Uh, just married? Choose a table under whatever ornament you want. With <laughs> bird cages about wedding dresses. Ooh, or bicycles. Old lights, lanterns. Obviously I got here very early this morning. The place is only just gonna start up now, but I took the opportunity to see what's what's on offer. I'ma have a breakfast here now. 
because I've worked up an appetite running around seeing what they have but I was just told I'm not done yet there's actually another whole store like one of those big warehouse stores on the other side so I'm just about to go in there now cue music here we go again that's what you call a plow shot Trivia for those of you that aren't familiar with South African terminology. This here, this, I mean, this is a little one, uh, this little black cauldron in South Africa, we call it a poiki, uh, which is basically Afrikaans for a small pot. But it doesn't matter how big they get, sometimes you can get a poiki that is that I can fit into, like, like a massive witch's brewing cauldron. Uh, it's still called a poiki, it's still called a little pot. Another fantastic South Africanism. No, that does not say slag gate, but slaggate, which is basically just a pothole. So that's warehouse one and warehouse two. And I'm standing on the big bus. From the from the bus here you've got a pretty good view of Padbach. I've always wondered about these things. I know they're called a jerry can. Uh, has that got anything to do with the Germans from World War II? It's a jerry can? I don't know. If you know the answer to that, let me know in the comments below. What, why, where did jerry can get its name from? The thing that I most enjoy about coming to these old collectible museum places is that if you're, for the youth, whoa, light adjust. There we go. I think I've entered the Tractor Museum now, officially. Uh, but what I was saying is what I like about these uh, old school museums like this is that uh, for the older folks, it's kind of like this, oh, do you remember this? Oh, do you remember that? Oh, we used to use these. And for the younger people, it's like, what is that? What was that used for? So it's, um, it's definitely a place to sort of spark the conversation about, about history and, and, get, and get chatting about it. Sort of an American look and feel. Shoo, check the chimney on that. Oh my god, there's an upstairs area too. Let's go up. You can't possibly see it all. So if you're ever thinking of doing a movie of the old South Africa, prop house right here. Some things are obviously for sale, they'll have a price on them, but many of the things in here are part of a private collection. You'll actually see either it'll say a private collection on it or it'll have an NFS not for sale sticker. Look Ma, the jerrycans! Who am I standing with? <laughs> with Anneline, by Tuka Stoer. Ons is gelee in windmilk area. Ja. Dis in landbouwskool en windmilkkellers ons gelee en ons de oud Tuka Stoer met al die mooie goed die by ons. So, so wat, wat, wat bedoel Tuka Stoer? Wat is dit? Tuka Stoer is Tuka se daar, toe ons nog, toe ek een kind was, was is, dit is waar my ons allemaal groot geword het. Ja? En ek verwacht dat al die ouwe mense dit baie sal geniet, is om al die ouwe ja. motors en trekkers en al die ouwe goed te sien wat ons by mekaar maak. Ek het al gesien hoe die mense stap in is, ek het so een gehad en, en, en daar kom die stories uit. Ja, en as en, mense wat voorbij rai hier, hoeveel keer ja. al en dan kom hulle die dag net die en dan sê hulle wow. Kom in. <laughs> wow, dit is amazing. So ek bedoel, dit is wat, wat ons liefde is by toekast oor. Die eienaars is versamelaars van ouge. So ek doen, ja. dit is hulle liefde en hulle geniet al hierdie mooie ouge. En die ontbijt was ook baie lekker. <laughs> is <right. laughs> There is a forecast uh, for rain later today. You can see the weather's changing pretty fast. It's a little, little on the chilly side, but still a very, very pleasant day. Oh, much needed coffee. Just seen a group of people come in now, and they're doing exactly what I said. 
looking around and ah, oh, you remember this and ah, oh, we used to have that and <laughs> it's great. It's freshly baked farm bread, good old English Got breakfast. Time can just do a standstill when you're here. I've just popped in at Denneboom, which is a farm with uh, accommodation on it in the Fuhrpaderberg region. In fact, the mountain behind me right here, that is the Paderberg, the one that I've been talking about so much. And right now we are in front of it. Das Fuhr die Paderberg. <laughs> you are on Denneboom. It's a family farm. We're in the Fuhr part of the area district, but it's a working farm. So you have everything from vineyards to citrus to grain to waterblomikis, everything. And I'm Willem, that's Elizabeth, my wife, and yeah, we live here. Five cottages with two bedrooms each, so we can accommodate about 20 people. I'm standing in the nature reserve part of Denneboom uh, estate. What is the use? Tell me. What makes this one or the, these ones here particularly special? Well, they're situated in the game reserve, so if... <laughs> Just look, I don't know, yeah. there's some eland on um, that side and some wildebeest on that side. Especially um, late afternoons when you sit outside, usually the ear lines and the blow wildebeest will walk right past mm -hmm. the cottages and somewhere they'll drink out of the pools, so you kind of That's get a chance cool. to be... In, yeah. in nature and sort of and, and you're getting the best of both mountains as well. I mean, you've got the Paderberg. That that is it, that's right? Paderberg mountain on that side. Okay. Down. Pole mountain on that side. Twenty years ago, so okay. we, 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 we bought a couple of uh, bonds book on, a, on, a, on an auction, and then one day a friend of my dad came and he he, he dropped off two games book and he said, Look, <laughs> he goes a present, and then we bought a couple of eland and a couple of springbok. But these are all, it's, 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 it's normal, I'm not say normal game, but normal. Non-threatening. Yeah, non-threatening, and they all, <laughs> they, 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 they're relatively tame, so they're used to people. I think one of the, the frustrating parts of, being, of doing this video, because we, I mean, we've probably seen about 60 places already, <laughs> um, and you keep going somewhere, and you're like, this is the best, and then the next one, this is the best, so I don't know if I've lost all credibility yeah. <laughs> somewhere along the line. <laughs> But what has started happening is the more I go to places I've started picking up like I didn't know I liked Shannon and mm -hmm. I, I really started to like it's like a drinking wine. Yeah. Really nice yeah, drinking yeah. wine. This area is very good for Shannon rock. You should get that. It's a melt post is only about 30 cases so of that. Yeah. So you get that breeze like coming over yeah. every every so afternoon. So your heat is closer to the mountains, I guess, and the yeah. cold in the in the more between yeah. them. So, but, but, but the problem with Paul is that you don't have, well, except for the wind, it's the Paul Mountain sort of blocks the the cold winds coming okay. in. Okay. So you get that hot air from Franchu because Franchu gets Bakes, a, uh, that berg winds coming down the valley. Yeah. So we're always about four or five degrees cooler than Paul. Okay. So in, in, in summertime, they'll have like 40, we have like 35, so it's nice. Now that is what you call an awesome, like, farm couple. We started off the day with uh, blue skies, but um, yeah, and back there are some dark clouds moving in. The rain has just started. I was told uh, when it's raining, you need to go drink wine. <laughs> Every single person you meet is like, if you like, try and complain about drinking wine, they're like, why? That's what we do here. Let's try out another wine cellar. So this is Paardebach. We're right next to the mountain. 
Uh, behind the cellar here you can see the Perde Bergmann. Name. I'm the owner and the chef of the new restaurant at Paderberg called Eat at Paderberg. So it's quite simple to, to remember. We open up the end of April, like I say, and it used to be an old storeroom that they've converted into a restaurant. And as you can see, it's very nice bold colors in, in our corporate colors the grays, the blacks, the reds, even my chef jacket, as you can see. Uh, and we're a family style restaurant. Uh, we operate um, Wednesday to Sunday and we do breakfast and lunch daily. And then we've got three conference venues and a big wedding venue, a multi-purpose centre. This is one of our tasting centres, the Quaja. So it has the facilities for tasting and then also a plate for okay. the conference. Something that you don't get very often um, or know about is the bush vine, which is basically instead of the, the neat rows with the, the wire that you're used to seeing with vineyards, it's actually a wild plant growing freely um, that stands. So I'll actually show you one that's on the wall here now. And those produce a certain flavor in wines and here's actually a collection that um, they make here. It's called the Dryland Collection. You're a lonely sailor and you're so A venue for family and for business. They have a wedding venue as well. Obviously it's empty at the moment, but this is what it looks like when it's all done up and nice. Pair de Berg is also known as the House of Shannon. Now, I didn't set myself up for this. It just kind of happened naturally. So I've been uh, booked in for a special wine pairing something that I believe you're not going to find anywhere else. <laughs> Larisha. Are you Larisha? Yes. The person that came to <laughs> We paired it with the wine, so mm. the winemakers tasted it before and then said no, we must add more flavour to it, it's too sweet, make it a bit more, so they They're made perfectly it, matched. Match with the wine, yeah. If there's marshmallows, there's got to be fire close by. <laughs> the sweets with my sweets. Mm. First one in the row here is your Pinot Noir Rosé. Pinot Noir Rosé MCC style. So obviously in South Africa we can't use the word champagne because champagne is only something that comes from the place in France called champagne. But we have our own style in South Africa which is called MCC. Method de Cap Classique. So we kept the French uh, twang in there but it's definitely our own Cape version of that. I haven't even tried the marshmallow yet. This, this tastes like marshmallows in itself. It feels like super overindulgent. Honest opinion on the first one, this on its own is actually quite sweet. Um, I was expecting something a little bit more dry because it is a Pinot Noir, um, but it, it's, it's got a very sweet smell to it, almost like a marshmallow. Uh, taste is, is a little bit more subdued, so it's not as sweet as you expect. Come and run away with me Hey, won't you come, won't you come In the ship Right, so the second one is not done in a MCC style. It's actually uh, added CO2, added afterwards. But does it connect with its marshmallow? Well, you ain't ever tasted a marshmallow like that before. That's for sure. So am I, am I doing it the right way? Actually having it in your mouth and then and then having a sip. It's not the wine, you need to go It like it melts away in your mouth. Phew! Sweetness <laughs> overload. <laughs> like when families come, if the if the parents have one of these pairings, they can run around like the kids afterwards. <laughs> so check this out. A so kitty's craft pairing. They have a cookie where they can paint. Yeah. Keep them busy with stereo stampy. <laughs> and dry fruit tots with uh, apple juice. So, from what I pick up now, you guys are very kids orientated. Yes. A family style... We are a family style restaurant, correct, here, yeah, catering mostly for mom, dad and the kids. Okay. Uh, we do a lot of kiddies parties. Yeah. And on weekends, uh, we do a lovely Sunday roast. And then we also have something new. 
we have a busy kitty's box. Sure. So that's can also keep them busy if they want a little pain me. <laughs> so there you have it. You've heard it in the restaurant. Outside there's a kitty's play area. And even in the tasting room, there's a whole range of things for kids, for kids to do. So very family orientated. Uh, I definitely would suggest on a weekend. Yes, we're open for Saturdays. Yeah, Saturdays. They, they, they're weekends on a Monday and Tuesday, so they, they can rest after a busy <laughs> weekend with you and your kids. <laughs> so bring the family um, and come and enjoy this. I've, I've still got a couple more to go through here. Next in line, we have Grenache Blanc. The sweetness never ends. So the sweetest of them all, the dessert one, it's actually got um, obviously the, the least sweet marshmallow or it just tastes that way when you combine them but definitely well matched as well so I want to take this opportunity to look at the stuff that we've been through over the last eight or what's it been eight days of uh, shooting in Paul to cover the first six routes um, which encompass the entire Paul region there was the eight mile route, which was the center of Pal. Then we went into the gentleman's meander down on the far end towards Franschhoek. Uh, after that, we had the de Toyskloof meander, followed by the Seit Achter Pal, Simodium, and now lastly, we're at Fuhrpaderberg. So those are the six main routes that encompass everything that Pal and Pal tourism have to offer. It is a vast amount of stuff. In these episodes, we've only been able to cover five or six venues a day. In the book, there's probably about 130, 140 venues in total. So we've only been able to give you a taste of what is available. The good thing is that each route has a variety of things to do, whether you are a solo traveler like I've been for the last two days, whether you're um, a group of friends like when Darren and I and myself do it, or even if you are a family, um, it's, there's something for you. If you choose one of the locations based on what you saw in these videos, you're in good hands because no matter where you are, around you are a group of businesses, family owned, crafted, beautiful places um, that are definitely worth experiencing. So get on the internet, go to the website, the links in the description below, or alternatively just come to Paul, go to Paul Tourism, to the office, the, the, the people there are super friendly, super helpful, they'll point you in the right direction based on what you want to experience. You can also get yourself one of those Wineland's Meander booklets, which is what we've been using to get around and um, yeah. Don't wait, come and experience Pal. This is the official ending of Pal, um, and we're gonna play out the last two minutes on just some of the best highlights from the last eight days. So, thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you enjoyed this. Please give us comments below if you have more questions, if you wanna know more, if you, if you disagree, if you agree, whatever it is. If you, want, if you have something that you wanna share with us or share with the world, you know the spot, it's in the comments. And um, yeah, thanks for watching. This has been really, really fun and I've enjoyed myself thoroughly.
Así 